I'm wondering, Bruce, if you might tell us in broad strokes how how has Bavink scholarship progressed since, um, I guess, Jan Wienhoff's monograph, which appeared about 50 years ago? What has happened in that time, and uh, where are we today? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Um, in the late, yeah, in the 60s, uh, Jan Wienhoff and um, Rolf Bremer wrote two excellent um, monographs on Bavink's theology. And uh, Bremer, in addition, wrote the um, terrific book, Bavink and His Contemporaries, uh, which is a biographical book uh, with a lot of uh, wonderful snippets from letters and uh, primary sources. Uh, and these are very big books. Uh, I think uh, so it's a little while since I was reading the Feinhoff, but I think it's about 700 pages. It's not a short oh book. Oh, my. And um, so the, these great works of uh, scholarship uh, became the landmarks, really, for Bavink studies. Uh, there wasn't a great deal written on Bavink as a theologian before that. Uh, it's one of the interesting features of Bavink's uh, work is that his immediate legacy in the Netherlands was as a pedagogue. Hmm. Uh, so if you travel to the Netherlands, you'll find Bavink streets and, uh, you know, schools named after uh, Bavink. Um, and that, that is because of his... Um, his active career in parliament. And uh, he wrote books on pedagogy, uh, pedagogical theory. Um, so this continued in the, you know, the interest in Christian schooling, but interest in him as a theologian waned quite, quite quickly. Um, there are, I, I, I touch on the broad reasons uh, for this very quickly in the introduction to the heart of dogmatics. Uh, but there's the short story is that there is virtual silence even on the centenary of his birth. Uh, it basically goes unnoticed, which is extraordinary when one thinks about that. Yeah. Um, but the, the, the basic reason for that is that um, Bavink died just as Karl Barth had become an international figure. Uh, and then the uh, upheavals of the World, World War II um, had, had really changed the shape, uh, not only of Dutch, interest in theology, but also the significance of theology in a broader uh, European, even Western context. Uh, but in the 60s, we have these <clears throat> very important books being published in Bavink. And I think uh, the natural uh, interest, as you mentioned uh, before, in the translation of Reformed dogmatics into English, such that the whole thing is widely and readily available, uh, kindled a lot of interest across the globe so the interest in Bavink is not really just a Dutch-American phenomenon. And even in the North American scene, you still needed to read Dutch to have access to a lot of his work. Uh, there are portions of Reformed dogmatics that had been translated, uh, but certainly not all of it. Uh, but make, making it a, a easy, readily available thing um, has meant that you even have an Anglican priest in Australia reading Reformed Dogmatics <laughs> and, and taking things further. Yeah. 